Hi, I'm Dorothea Martin at Virginia Randolph, the PACE program. My name is Sharita Tillman at Virginia Randolph at the PACE program as well. This is our uh, fiscal science class, and today we're going to learn, or we're going to have the learning intentions will be of physical properties of a substance. We're going to pretty much uh, demonstrate the use of a thermometer. Okay? So. All right, so today we're going to determine a substance that can change physically and chemically without any chemical reaction. For an example, like ice cube, it will turn into water. Versus vice versa, as if it's water, it'll, if you freeze it, it'll turn back to the same um, solid. All right, all your students should be writing this down. Okay, and we should be able to ask you, well, what are we learning today or what are we doing today? Or anyone can walk in and ask you that and you should be able to have it, Texas. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you are done with that, what I need you to do, okay, you're already in groups, okay? You're going to select someone to be the materials person, okay? We're gonna go over the short, it's not quite a lab, but more so um, a learning activity. So we're going to go over that. We need a materials person, okay? And then we need a person to be the uh, writing in the group, the writer. And then we need someone or all of you to help clean up afterwards, all right? All right, for people who are done or almost done, uh, Ms. Tillman has a couple questions, and they're going to be your warm-up questions. So, can anyone tell me what is physical change, or do you know what physical change is? When someone changes, like, it's way or what? Right, but without any chemical, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Devin, you know what chemical change is, physical change? When it stays the same. Yes, when it stays. I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to do like a quick little game scenario. I'm going to give you guys a card that says, physical change and chemical change. And I'm going to say out some scenarios and you guys are going to hold up the card. Is it physical or chemical? Yeah, like this. Everyone's doing really nice. And I think we remember what's happening. And you're good. Here we go, listen to Miss C, please. Okay, so I'm going to call out some things and you're going to either hold up a card that is physical or chemical change. All right, baking cupcakes. Is that chemical change or physical change? All right, I see some people with physical and I see some with chemical. Just remember that once it changed, okay, you know what was involved with cupcakes. You listening? Cupcakes have like eggs, flour, um, maybe some cocoa powder, okay? You got all of that. Now, once I bake it, can I get those individual stuff back out? Can I get the eggs back out of it? No. So then it's, it's a complete chemical it's change. A complete it's a new chemical change. Okay, so what if I have a beaker and I throw it on the floor and it shatters? Is that physical change or chemical change? Great, everybody has physical change. Um, do one more, an old, Car rusting. I got to hurt again. An old car, car rusting. rusting. Rust. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. Yeah. It's one of these two. Okay, so everybody pretty much has chemical change mm -hmm. because it changes whole physique. It's not the same car, it just turns to something else. Always ask yourself for physical or chemical change. Chemical change. Is it the same substance, can I, or can I get back the original substance, like rust? Rust is pretty much iron and water, right? And you can brush it off, but from that rust, can I get back the water or the iron? No, so that's a chemical change. We can't get back what we had originally. A physical change means it's made out of the same stuff as it always has been, like a, a piece of glass, okay? And I throw it to the floor. Each one of those pieces are made of the same stuff that the original glass is made of, right? So then this is a physical change. It's just changed physically, like a piece of paper. We tear it up. Each one of those pieces are still made out of the same stuff that that whole sheet of paper is made out of. 
That's a physical change. Yeah, so physical change is just like a new substance that is not forming chemical is forming. Those Always are the difference between the two. Like, is it or not? So you're already in a group, and what you're going to do, okay? Each group will get three beakers, okay? One beaker will be room temperature water, okay? The other one will be hot water, and the last beaker will be cold water. Also made little tags, so you can take the tags with you, okay? So what you're going to do first, and also grab a thermometer, and you'll have goggles, right? We're going to take the temperature of the water in the beakers, okay? So what you need to do is have a person that's a materials person. Yes, sir. Over here. So which one guys want to be the Come on. Person? I want to be the, uh, I want to, I want to do the, um, I want All right. to the Each one we're filling it to 300, uh, 300 uh, liters, like milliliters, okay? So you're going to start, go fill that up for 300. Right here, you see this? You're going to fill this up to 300. Room temperature water. We want room temperature water, people. Guys, one of the things we need is hot water. What kind of precautions we need to take using hot water, you think? Yeah, you could burn your hands. So anything we should wear? You can put safety goggles so the water doesn't splash in your eyes. Okay? Uh, Mr. Sir, you're not done yet. Okay? This is your room temperature water? Because it looks like it's hot. All right, come and get the cold water. Here we go. And you take the little tags with the cold water. And next we're going to have hot water. Good. All right, here, make sure you take your tags. Right there, that's your what? Room temperature water? Okay, put that down. I need you back up over here. Oh, there you go. So take one for the cold water. I mean, yes. And what do you have over there? Room temperature and cold? Okay, let's make hot. Take this water and pour it out in the sink, and we'll get some hot water from here. Okay? Take this one, pour it in the sink, and we'll get hot water from here. Oh, everybody, so while they're doing this, okay, you listening? Guys at the back table, pour in. Oh, get everyone goggles for your team. Everybody put on goggles before we do the hot water. Please. There you go. And thermometer. Caesar. All right, put your goggles on. All right, here, we're going to do the hot water. Okay? All right, here you go. You're pouring it up to 300 again, all right? There you go. Okay, let's go. Okay, we really need to keep uh, the labels with the water. So we can identify each one. Thank you, sir. Here's your label for that. All right, so right now we're at number four. Can anybody read that for me, what we need to do? I can't see this <laughs> I believe you. All right, have students take the temperature for each beaker and record it on their handout, okay? Students should make a prediction as to what will happen when we add food coloring to each beaker. So what you're doing is on your paper, at the top, they, you're just looking at the water right now, okay? Mm -mm -mm. And you're gonna make, and you're just gonna make an observation for each one, all right? After we're done with that, we're gonna use the same thermometer and we're gonna take the temperature of the hot water, the cold water, and room temperature water, and we're gonna put that in here, all right? Here's gonna okay. be your beaker too, which is cold water, mm -hmm. and your third beaker is hot water. Yep, so what do you see in each water? Like, what do you see, like, you just describe the water. I don't think they have that on the paper. Hot water, cold water, room temperature water. And they need to... You can't say bubbles in here when it's bubbles in here. These real bubbles. Oh, right here, number four. Right, right. Right here, prediction will happen when food coming at. Place one drop after the observation. Okay, here, then you make the distinction. Just say, right beside it, just put hot water. And we'll make that beaker one. And this is what we can do. 
See these little tabs on here? We can also write on these beakers, all right? So I wrote a number one on the hot water. There you go. You can write number two. Write number two on the room temperature water. And number three, cold water. Um, my cold is number one. Oh, that's fine. As long as you know the difference. Yeah, I know the, I know the difference. <laughs> my observations are great. All right. This is warm water. Room temperature. What about Walmart? All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the temperature each. Wait till everyone in your group is ready to do that. All right? Putting it in the center, holding it. Make sure you do the same for each beaker. Okay, for the cold water. I think it might need to be a little bit higher because the immersion line. All right, so you know you can do this and hold it. Oh, yeah. It didn't move much, did it? It's going down, I think. Okay. I can't really see these goggles are making it kind of hard. Oh, well, then just a little. All right, so what's your temperature for beaker one? We're like 35. 30. <laughs> Okay, so you guys agree on 35, so you're going to put 35 in the beaker. All right, let's do cold water. I mean, All right, Terry, then you're going to do the temperature for cold water. Negative 10 or 8. Okay. Do I wipe it off or I just put it on? Yeah, you put it right here, man. Mm hmm. All right, let's see. Do I just wipe it off or I just. Try this. Try hot water. Yeah, try hot water. Let's see. It's going up. Oh, it's going down. Yeah, just let it go. Let's see. It's going up. I'm trying to see it. Let's see. 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 Okay. Oh, that's acid. Acid 19. Okay, 15 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, okay, everyone must agree. That is what? 13 and a half degrees. Okay, 13.5 degrees. This is with 13. 13 degrees Celsius. Room temperature water, right? Yeah, Corvette. Okay. Room two. Temperature, room temperature water. So what is going to happen? Do you think that's going to, the red line's going to go up or down or stay the same? Hmm? I think it's going to go down. Yeah, because we just had hot water. Is it going down? It went down to zero. All right. Put zero in for our room temperature. The next step, I will walk around and put a drop of food coloring in your beakers. Okay. What happened to our food coloring? Who touched it? All right. No, this, what does it say right here? The teacher will add food coloring to each glass of water. Okay? Okay. You're going to make a prediction about what you think will happen to the food coloring when it's added to each speaker. Write that down. All right, so now you guys are going to read the next question. The last it says, make a prediction what do you think about what do you think will happen to the food coloring when added to each speaker. Okay. Tell me what will happen. Um, what happens Write it down. is with cold water, it'll stay still. Okay. Uh, with room temperature water, it'll move around, and with hot water, it'll move around as well. Okay, let's see that. So, why do you think that's going to happen with hot water? Because I've done this before. Well, you gotta have, you got to have an explanation other than, I've done this before, okay? Because I watched it with my own eyes happen. <laughs> Maybe the... Maybe the molecules, <laughs> maybe the molecules oh, in the yeah, hot the molecules will, are move, tighter. Yeah, will move faster with heat. Molecules are tighter. Okay. Did you write your prediction down? Make a prediction. Did you sketch your observation? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Room temperature water. What do you think is going to happen? So beaker number one is what? Hot, hot water. Okay. Ready? I'm just going to add one drop. Okay. Now, is this what you said would happen? No, I said cold water would stay still. Not oh. Hot, it would move around. So what happened? How can we explain this? It moved around? Okay. Did all the water turn a color? No. I just said it would move around, though. Yeah, and I, I love the way you said that because, it, yeah, I think like the warmer the water, the mo more emotion you have in the molecules. So you got one drop and it's really two. Wow. So sketch what you see. I told you. You did tell us. Caesar, what do you think happened? It expanded. 
I like that. So was your prediction correct? Can you just explain why. Correct. Why was not? your prediction correct? Yes. Yes. Why? Because the experiment proved they're correct. So put the I like that. Yeah. Put the, mm -hmm. experiment. So the room temperature water. Do you think it was different from the hot water? Yeah, because the room temperature was less temperature and the hot water had it like move around because the molecules were more spread out. So it had time to get in. I like that. Okay, Corvell, what do you think? Cold water. What, what happened with the cold water? It moves around pretty fast. As compared to room temperature water. Okay. So you said the colder water, shh, the colder water um, dispersed the what the dye faster. Yeah, we went faster. Let me ask you a question. If you're out in the cold, let's say you're standing out in the cold, okay, are you like going like this, 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 or are you just standing there because you're freezing? I'm moving around to keep warm. Yes, but most things uh, will start freezing. Just like kind of like stand there. So it's called a state of matter. Usually, uh, we deal with four states, solid, liquid, gas, all right? So when we're talking about state of matter and using the thermometer, okay, we use liquid water, okay, and the temperature difference. So let me ask you, what did we think? When we dropped the dye into the water, which uh, water do you feel that the dye dispersed, went all over the place faster? Yes. Number one, what was number one? Hot? Room temperature. Room temperature? Wow, okay. It was hot. That's good. Yeah, um, I, you know, I was thinking hot because like you're hot, like you're on a beach and there's sand and you're moving around really fast, but you're still, you're just moving, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. But I like that. Which one? I'm just telling you what I've seen. Like, it, it I like that. Sure. Yes, sir. Terry's right. Okay, that was, a, that was his observation and that was an excellent observation. So what about the cold water? It just sunk. You said it just sunk like it just kept still, yeah. kind of sort of when you cold water. This group over here, what about the cold water? Cam, stop please. The molecules were tighter. What do you mean by tighter? Of like, huh? Not much to get past it. Not much to get past. So. Like it wouldn't mix, like if they were warm and uh, hot. It wasn't moving as much. Okay. So that you find that it's in some liquid and gas. If it was a gas, it would really move over the place. So we only dealt with liquid and the liquid temperature. Let me ask you. So in our next experiment, and you know we're going to do one, to make ice cream, okay? And with that, we have ice cubes, okay? And we're going to put rock salt on it or ice cream salt, okay? And we find that it gets really, really, really cold. And we're going to find that the ice starts to melt faster, okay? So let me ask you a question. Do you think the temperature of the ice will be colder when we first start or colder afterwards? Colder afterwards. Colder afterwards. How can we relate that to them putting salt on the roads? Can um, anybody? Chemicals and stuff. Chemicals and stuff. Okay. Why do they put salt on there? Uh, to keep ice from forming. To keep ice from forming. Okay. I like that. You know what? Thank you, guys. I appreciate everybody. All right. We hope you enjoyed our lesson. Today on State of Matter. Go, Go nice! nice.